it's very important. That's the, that's the first thing. Whenever I have a hiring decision to make, I know that because of the way I operate, I want that person to have a fair degree of autonomy, and therefore, it better be someone who is bright and experienced and can work with others and has the creativity needed for the particular job. The other thing I look for is for, um, you know, a, someone who can tolerate ambiguity because someone who sees the world in black and white is not likely to work out as well as someone who understands that people, life, it's all very complicated and interwoven and you have to work through your challenges by dealing with other people. When I'm interviewing people, I try to ask them some questions that give me some idea of how they think. Um, recently, though, I was interviewing a woman and I didn't have to ask her many probing questions because it was clear she had a very quick mind, very quick mind. And so right away she sort of moved up, uh, up the scale. And I think that um, partly that in this line of work it's really important to make sure people can listen. And sometimes you know that in an interview. I do find interviews are more revealing than resumes in many cases, although the resumes are important. What I find is that it's good to have multiple people in the organization doing interviews, separate interviews of the people who we are thinking of hiring. And that way I get a pretty diverse um, uh, response from people I trust about how this person comes across and how they think whether or not they think we, she or he would be able to work with us and work with us well. And so all I can say is I don't think there's any formula except for trying to test for those things that you're looking for. And some of them are not just, they don't always come across in the interview. I care a lot about integrity, of course, and that you have to find out from other things uh, that, that might have happened in the past. And I care a lot about tenacity. I mean, I want people here who, when they have a problem, don't give up. That they basically try to fix it, and when they can't fix it, they try again or try a new approach. Um, I've learned in my time, in my working life, there's a lot to be said for tenacity. Someone who simply doesn't give up. Uh, not easy to test for, but sometimes, sometimes you can get a sense of it from what they've done in the past or what they say in an interview. The answer is a good working environment. I mean, part of what I do is to manage the personality and other tensions or conflicts that arise among the staff who work here. Very different people work here, very different people. And so sometimes they get at odds with each other. And my job, I think, is always to sort of get a, convey the impression, hey, we're all in this together. Let's figure out how we can work through something that seems at first glance to be pretty difficult. And usually we can. I mean, people, keep, people can flare up and then they settle down if they're handled right. And if you get that sort of interpersonal stuff right, then the people working together are happier. When that stuff can't get fixed, uh, I think it's, it's, uh, that's when people leave. They just don't feel they're respected or trusted or they can't get along with someone else in the, in, in the office. And to me, um, that's more important than the, than the particular benefits. I mean, everyone, there has to be a salary, there's got to be some sort of uh, health care usually, there's got, there's got to be some benefits uh, to regular benefits. But beyond that, I think a lot has to do with whether or not they get along with the people in the office. And there, you want to hire the right people who are, have an instinct for collaboration. And when the collaboration isn't working, do what you can to restore it. I don't think that question can be answered generally. I mean, I believe that basically what you try to do is you take people and you allow them to work on the things they're good at and the things they're not so good at. You don't try to force on them. You try to get someone else to do that work. Now, you can't always do that. Sometimes there's something they're not good at that is, right, that is central to their job. And in that case, if you don't think it'd be fixed, then it's time to part ways. But, um, you know, a lot of the time, 
you can manage assignments so that people, so that you're playing to people's strengths and not their weaknesses. I spent 19 years practicing law in a law firm in Portland, Maine. I spent 12 years in Congress. Now I've spent four years as head of this association, this trade association. And there are differences. I mean, there certainly are differences depending on what kind of organization you, you go and work for. But um, some of the qualities you're looking for in people are pretty much the same. I will say that when it comes to one quality, or a couple of qualities which carry over are the ability to read, write, and think clearly. Those, those are fundamental, I think, to all of the sort of areas in which I have, I have worked. Um, but, um, but I really, th and I also think one other idea, in the public sphere, when you're working, you know, it, this grows out of my experience in Congress, um, the people you hire better have very good antennae because they have to be listening to all sorts of disparate um, conversations and complaints and ideas. And they've got to be able to listen to the good and the bad without immediately forming a judgment about those. So I think that the kind of sensitivity you need when you're in the public space is greater than what you need if you're in a law firm. Although it's always helpful. It's always helpful. To, uh, to be able to listen and listen well and, and reconsider your own thoughts and conclusions and approaches when someone has a better idea. Maybe it's the nature of the business. Think of all the new talent that you are helping to, uh, to, uh, de to develop. Uh, I do think, you know, if you're a very small company and you can't afford the salaries that people can, can uh, you know, attract once they've been in the business for a while, you're going to have new people coming through. Maybe the thing to do is just to change the mindset. Say, okay, I'm going to develop the best people I can and try to keep them for as long as I can, and then we'll go out and find someone, someone else. And I know that continuity for any organization, if you get a good person, you want to keep them forever. But most people don't do that. In my congressional experience, in our congressional office, I understood there were a lot of people coming out of college who wanted to work in the, the U.S. House, and, but they might be going to graduate school or to something else. So we would hold them for two to three to four years, and then they'd move on. And that was just the nature of the, of the kind of work. I mean, some people were lifers, or close to lifers, but a lot of other people move through and you just go back into the, the training process again and keep looking for good people with real potential.